Hello and welcome to uh, Tangerine Steam Demo Festival Boomer Shooters. This is the Uh, this is be a, a bit a big one, I presume. Where are we yeah. are we limiting ourselves to like try and like five minutes per per Yeah, game again? let's do it. Because otherwise Okay. I will go on for ten minutes about some of the other Okay, stuff. okay. I'll I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll pull So out what the were timer we starting as well. with then? What is this Are you first talking? game? I'll... Yeah. Oh, you can put a timer too, because I'll I'll ignore the time. Uh, this is Blood West. So Blood West is an immersive Wild West FPS where a revenant desperado takes on twisted demons and eldritch horrors in a cursed, desolate mining town. Hell is empty and the devils are here. Plan your steps to be stealthy, gain advantage, manage Well, your resources, and paint the world dark red. I'm I'm already interested. Yeah, we've got well, demons there's... and eldritch horrors. Well, I say like. I call it boomer shooters, which I think when I say boomer shooters, people think of uh, stuff like, you know, Doom or Duke Nukem or whatever, Yeah, but like usually but there in are this other ones. boomer shooter category, you also have stuff like immersive sims, like, uh, you know, like old Deus Ex, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're doing we're doing both sorts, I guess. Um, yeah, the I'm more just going action to call it, and immersive yeah, sims. just old school shooter yeah, sort yeah. of stuff with, you know, old school mechanics, that sort of stuff. So this is Blood West. Uh, let me get up my notes for this. Um, and it's it's an extremely slow shooter. It is more like an immersive sim than a boomer shooter. Um, uh, like, to an extent, um, it has the Fallout barter system in it. I don't know if you ever Oh, seen... right. I don't know if you ever seen, like, the original Fallout barter system from, like, Fallout 1 and 2. Yeah, Like, I, I've seen bits of it. It very you would... it confuses me a lot, but You would, like, trade guns and different items yeah. in order to get the stuff you wanted, and then there would be a scale on how much they were worth based on what you were bartering. Yeah, Uh, that straight I up has this. There's an inventory system where you have to, like, barter between items, and then your semi-like currency is you will take, like, pieces of, like, rare metals if you need to get more barter for your buck. Um... It's pretty interesting. See, Blood West is low poly, non linear exploration and resource management horror FPS with stealth and souls like death elements. Um, so, this is made by a company called Hyper Strange. And it's the actually the same developer as another game we're going to be talking about um, called Postal Brain Damage. So, um, <laughs> right, okay. we've got some reoccurring characters here. Apparently, Postal is a boomer shooter now, Tony. I don't Yep, know. I don't I'm know how surprised. you feel about Headshot. shot him in the head with the axe. Yeah, Yep. and a lot of people were trying to say like, you know, look, some people considered Postal a boomer shoot, like the original Postal's a boomer shooter, are sort of in the same category. And I was always like, I don't know. I never sort of got it, but I'll talk about that later, I guess. Um. It is kind of a weird. I don't know, it's, it's all kind of all over the place anyway, like, it's not, like, a really, like, well-defined section of gaming or theme of gaming. I don't know, I could, I could, I could, I could hear the, I could understand the arguments for that, but not what I would personally give it. Yeah. So Mm. that's Um, just this a is incredibly bit of a game. slow, this game. And I think I really liked it at first. But then when I had to, like, sort of start again, I was like, ah, fuck this shit. So you, you started, like, filling up your inventory and collecting stuff. Every... Gun has different bullet types. There's Oh bandages. God. There's different like bartering. Yeah, it gets. It's very in depth. It's very much like old school, like Fallout sort of. You know, Fallout One, Fallout I Two like style. the Tetris inventory. That's Mm. great. Does every coin take up So, a... so this is the bar system here. I'm trading with this guy at the moment. I'm trying to barter to get more ammo for my gun. Look at these creatures. They're like vulture people with guns. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling this. Uh, this revolver, though. Hmm. Shouldn't there be more impact behind it? Oh, apparently I have 40 seconds to talk about this. I just realized I was on a Yeah. timer. Uh, Blood West is pretty interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you were talking about other stuff as well, though, so I'll give you an extra minute. Yeah, Blood West is pretty interesting. I think I enjoyed it. 
I think I died immediately, and then I enjoyed it, like, slowly going through it. But the, the, the core mechanic is, like, you keep getting res by a totem, but every time you get res by a totem, you get, like, a curse. And then you have to right. do a quest to uh, get rid of the curse debuff. So it's like every time you die, you come back with a disadvantage, so it's, like, harder and harder sort of thing. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I actually quite liked how, like, slow the gameplay and the... And, like... I don't know, it didn't feel like a slog, it felt like it was good progression, like going through slowly and like killing enemies one by one and scavenging resources, yeah, like, like, actually felt quite fun, although... Every I, enemy can kill you, right, like, like if yeah. you fuck up, like... I think I got to a point where I was going, I was like, there was some like lost souls sort of thing where there's these skeletons flying towards me. And then there was a point where I was going into these caves and I was like, oh, I need to get through these caves. I, like, um, fell off a cliff, died, and then I was like, I lost everything because I died. And I was like, okay, fuck this shit. Like, yeah. I can't be bothered to do all that again. Like, I don't know. I think it was fun until I was like, I just died to fall damage. And then I was like, oh, I have to do all so of that again. You can't get your stuff back if you die. No, I don't think so. Because in Dark Souls, you die, you, you have like one chance to get your stuff back. Right. Because like that also technically gets sort of gets harder like every time because like you lose all your stuff. Hmm. Uh, oh, oh. Is me oh. dying? Oh. So then what happens is I think you spawn at the last totem you talk to. So I have some of my stuff back, but I've got this debuff. Oh, that's the big thing. When you die, all the enemies respawn as well. That was a big yeah. thing. So all the resources I use killing the enemies, I have to kill them again. I think that's what was bothering me. Yeah. Was that um, I used all my resources and then the enemies came back sort of thing. Um, so I think that... Dark Souls has it the other way around. Like if you decide to use like a campfire, only mm. then does it respawn the enemies, not if you die. And then, of course, they have this deal. This game is really punishing, and it's really slow. I do think there's potential with this one, but I think... Um, if, if you Some balance tweaks. Yeah, if you just keep on going and dying over and over again, then I don't think it's going to be that much fun for you. We should move on, because yeah. I'm, I'm using it too much. Yeah, yeah. That's so Fallen <laughs> Aces, right. Start the 10-minute timer. Uh, Fallen Aces. 10-minute ten, ten timer? Hold on. So this is the new um, the New Blood game. Okay. At first I thought it was just going to be a straight up boomer shooter, but it's actually more of an immersive sim uh, with fast gameplay, which is, of course, nothing new from New Blood. New Blood's always been doing their uh, boomer shooters and immersive sims. Um, you know how much I love, like, oh, I love noir-themed stuff. Um, and, I, I, and I think you love sprite animations as well. Oh, here's something I put down. I like there was a noir mode option that just made the game black and white. Oh, is there? Okay. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I love the comic book 2D North theme you, uh, the, they have going yeah, on. The animations look amazing already. Mm. I like, yeah, it's like a mix of like 2D, can't, 3D can't, environments. Yeah. You can like stealth, like I think most of the game you can completely stealth, like hide in shadows to take people out unconscious from behind sort of thing. Um, you can throw everything. Everything in the world you can pretty much pick up and throw. Uh, I think there were some complaints that you could eat a banana and get the banana peel and then the enemies wouldn't um, slip over the banana. What? I think that was changed, nice, though. Yeah, I think that was changed. Good, good. Um, that's just going to say. Oh. So. Oh, my God. Um, it was a really fun mix of gunplay and melee stealth. Or, like, it's... Okay, so this is sort of more of a brawler. The thing with this game is there is guns, but you don't really use them Ammo very often. Message. It's like, I think when I first thought I thought it was going to be more of an FPS, but it's more of a FPB, more of a first-person brawler, which yeah. is like a really yeah. interesting way to go with this game. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in that than the shooting person. Like, this already look, this looks great to me. So already. this was the, this was the first demo. This was the demo up for the uh, Steam Demo Festival. Some notes right. I had were stealth seemed a little easy because the AI was really dumb. So basically, you right. could throw something at the AI, and if you just walked into a shadow, but like, oh, where's he gone? I don't see him anymore. Like, you know, that sort of like 
kind of dumb AI sort of thing. That, that wasn't intentional, you don't think? No, I don't think they meant for the AI okay. to, to just walk into a corner and then the AI to give up. Like, I think it was... Right, right. Um, but I heard even Deathloop had dumb AI, so probably just a problem with the genre, I guess, with stealth games. I think it's hard to balance, like, the AI yeah. and then stealth. Like, it... oh, look at this, Red. Um... So, so I have. Oh, I uh, I didn't. Uh, I meant to ask you what engine did you think the last game was in? <laughs> Blood I West. No, I. I, I have put, no idea. So I tried to find out the engines of all the games I played with, and I didn't find all of them. But it, so I just put Unity question mark. I'm going to assume it was Unity. Okay. I know this one. I know this one. Um. That'll ask you afterwards. Um, yeah, this was really fucking fun. Um, great little secrets everywhere. I like secrets that actually make the game harder just to troll you. You can push a button and it, like, spawns more enemies. Um, <laughs> okay. mm. I did think that there was, like, a light attack, a heavy attack, and a block. One thing I found was I never found a reason to block or use the heavy attack. It just felt like it was way better to just, um spam the, the light attack and that was something that I um so you do get guns and you can even throw the gun if you want to there is some gunplay but it's very light I think it's more to take out enemies who also have guns yeah uh, do you want to guess which yeah. engine this is in I, I would I I don't know. Like I want to say like Unity again, but that's your guess. Yeah, it's a complete. It's a complete sound. In the dark okay, so this is honest. Unity. So I was watching. Okay, okay. I was watching Dave Oshry on the New Blood stream. Um, I believe if I remember correctly, he said the game originally um, Fallen Atus was running in Game Maker Studio Two, back when he right. um, they bought the game onto New Blood. And basically, Dave Oshry, who is one of the um, developers who worked on, like, uh, Dusk, he was basically like, no, there's no way we can get a fucking first-person brawler running, like, no way we're going to get it running on Game Maker Studio. Like, yeah. So they moved it to um, Unity. Right, right. And then they said, as well... Um, they they port they spent like a year porting it to Unity and I think they said a new replant demo is coming for Fallen Aces with more reason to block and use heavy attacks okay. uh, and the game is definitely a brawler and there will not be a lot of guns in the full game either that's something I learned from watching the live stream as well of uh, right, Dave okay. Oshry on New Blood um but yeah uh, I I was really disappointed when they show Fallen Aces in the trailer for the last Steam demo festival and then I couldn't play it because of a miscommunication with Valve. Uh, yeah. But I finally got to play it, and it was really fucking fun. I uh, recommend this one. But let's, uh... Wait, is this an example of him? Wait, what? Look, look at <laughs> he the, uh... the door. Wait, where and did that he go? He didn't see you. Hey, where was he? <laughs> yeah, that's that's okay. That's definitely freaking okay. But anyway, let's move on because I've gone over time. Next up, we have. It looks great though. Forgive me, father. Uh, so this is gonna... oh, this is like an Eldritch Horror sure. Is this is that correct? So it's a priest killing zombies and Cthulhu monsters. It's like an interesting oh, blend nice. of eldritch horror elements and shooter. It has like this mind bending stuff where it's like, oh, what's going on? You're a priest and these monsters are appearing. It's like, it's what's real and what's not real. Um, yeah. Oh, one thing That's I liked about this game is like a lot of like boomer shoot stuff. I don't give a shit about the story. So they literally have these problems say, this is story stuff. Read this stuff if you give a shit about the story. Yeah, that's nice. That's cool. Oh, yeah. also, it had DLSS in the... Um, this demo had DLSS. I feel like that's becoming way more common. Um, I think that's... It's getting easier to add, isn't it? Like, mm. if you add, I remember the it's first... It's like easy way to implement. The first demo I saw with DLSS was uh, Ghost Runner, I think. was the first time I was like, oh, shit, it's a demo with yeah. DLSS on it. That's kind of interesting. Um, but I felt like... It, when it comes to stuff like FSR and DLSS, it like makes a lot more sense now to actually start uh, putting this on your game because if it's a demo, like it's it's gonna help it run better. So 
Yeah. You know I mean? And it's, it's like you can design the game, game around it as well. Mm. So, um, Ooh. turn it down a little bit because this one's a bit louder than the others. Um, it's got this 2D sprite uh, look to the art, which I think, again, I, I like the 2D sprite art style. I think the art style yeah, good. was good. Uh, the menu was well designed, the thing, even how DLSS. Uh, there's a section where you need to use a lantern, and the lantern was not explained to me at all. And I almost could not get progressed to the demo without knowing how to use the lantern, unless I just completely skipped the prompt and, you know, dummy brained it. But I could not figure out for the life of me how to use this lantern, and I needed it to get through a dark area to progress. Uh, I would have oh, yeah. liked a bit more tutorial on that. Um, like, it kind of just plops you in, sort of thing, which I don't mind games doing that. Um, but for the lander thing, I kind of accidentally figured out how to do it. Like, it was not explained. You had to select it and then hold down right click, which I learned later. Like, some things okay. weren't explained at all, like how to level up or how to use the cross, which I discovered how to use by accident just playing the game. Um, weapon switching, I felt, was really clunky. I felt like I just wouldn't switch weapons half the time. When I was trying to switch between like the shotgun and the, the pistol and stuff, which is pretty an pretty annoying. Um, right, right. Uh, so I I read up on the community scope. Apparently, this is to stop reload animation. Um, this is to stop reload animation cancelling. But if black play black belt players want to do this, where they quickly switch between um, guns and fire them very quickly by animation cancelling, I think. You should just allow people to be able to do that. I don't think you want to yeah. discourage people from doing that sort of thing. Oh, I, one thing I found was cool was like there were zombies carrying heads. If you shot their head off, they would put the head they were carrying on and then use that head. <laughs> right, and then okay. if you shot the head they were carrying and then shot their head, you could do it that way. So you could choose which way to do it. You see, like, there was that moment where it was like health and ammo and then it just spawns you in a room full of, like, zombies and stuff which right, right. I thought was like a cool little thing and then it makes you walk backwards in order to get you to actually go to the pickup oh so like okay right so like losing your mind um i think one of the big strengths of this game is the art and the atmosphere i think it's a yeah. great little atmospheric creepy atmospheric uh, sorry, creepy eldritch horror game and then you get into battles and it just starts playing rock music and i'm just like this feels a little out of place like <laughs> yeah I don't think we have to have um, creepy rock music just because it's a boomer shooter. I think we are past the point where we can just be like, hey, you want to make yeah. a creepy atmospheric shooter? Just, you know, use the atmosphere or put some more fitting music, I guess. I, I don't know. That's that's my note for that one. Um, but yeah, I think that's... It does, look, it does look very interesting, though, but... I think it's actually come out now in early access, so I think, like... Okay, okay. It is a little rough around the edges in early access, um, but I think these are definitely things that could be fixed and improved for the full release. So I would say come back and check this one out. Uh, so is this the lantern section we're looking at now, though? Yeah, well, I was like, oh, I don't know how to turn on my lantern. <laughs> uh, so there is like a level up system, which again I said wasn't explained, but I just sort of figured out how to do it, which let you. Oh, upgrade okay. one of your guns sort of thing on this big tech tree sort of thing which I thought was pretty cool I'll show you some of the light levels because it's like pretty interesting it's TARDIS yeah there's there's like these uh, when I say like Cthulhu like Eldritch stuff there's literally like Cthulhu people in gas masks that are very um okay interesting art design. I think the art design is a big strength. I'm trying to find them. Because they're fucking everywhere, but... There's a lot of zombies holding heads. Oh, you got oh. Mimic fucking... That's cool. Oh, here they are. These are like this Cthulhu oh, okay. army dudes. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's move on. Next up, we have Hyperviolent. 
Uh, Hyperviolent is... Oh, sorry, what engine did you think that was in? Um, oh. Me. I'm I surprised I... that's some sort of Doom engine, but... I, I don't I don't know. I think it's... I'm going right. to guess Unity, but I actually don't know. Right. So, next up we have Hyperviolent. Um, Hyperviolent, an anomalous infection spreads to the minds of Commodus Astros 27... See, brutally fight your way through hordes of monstrous foes. You attempt to contain the infection, uncover its dark origins of this glorious, violent, fast-paced retro shooter. I sort of yeah, through the airlock. Don't like this game. I didn't think I liked this one at all. Um, okay, okay. So I might only need five minutes to play this one. I think it had really good, creepy atmosphere. Um, where literally when the first enemy, I like interacted with the first enemy, it scared the shit out of me. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I think that was a big strength of this game was it was fucking, like, atmospheric and creepy sort of thing. Um, but you don't like actually playing it? You no, know, it, like, as a creepy atmosphere, like, Doom clone, it's like, it's good, but then... Yeah, the atmosphere was amazing to me, like, just from watching it. But then it ultimately was confusing, and it right. was more like the old style of moonshot that I don't like where it's just like running around not knowing where to go you're on like a uh, okay. switch hunt I don't know what's you happening just, yeah look for the key look for the yeah, item yeah I was like look for the okay. door. I, I, I don't care for that sort of stuff anymore um yeah and, it, and it's not a fun mechanic to try and find stuff like I, I don't know it's just not well there was like, literally a add... point where I had to keep interacting with a room with this bright flashing light and it was hurting my oh. eyes, and there was... Oh, this time I had no options, by the way. There was zero options. Oh, okay. Um, so there was a section where I just had to keep running to ruin this bright flashing light in my face, and I was like, I have no idea what to do. I'm just going to stop playing this one because I'm not Is enjoying it. Is there no map, it. either? Uh, there's probably, like, a tab map. Um, right. But I, don't, I think I... Yeah, I think I used the map, and I still couldn't figure out where I was supposed to be going. I'll see if I pull up the map at any point. Oh, there's a weird inventory system as well that wasn't explained. Uh, Why is it so small? I don't know. Maybe it's just fucked up scaling. What what engine yeah. do you think this is? I know this I'm, one. I would like to. I would like to say it's a Doom engine. A or like, Doom um, engine, right? One one of the older engines. I want to say. If not, yeah. it's very well emulating it. So this is Game Maker Studio. So I'd say this is right. like a older sort of. Boomery yeah. sort, of, more boomery sort of engine. Um, I think one thing you can tell is if it if it if it's like GZ Doom or like Game Maker Studio, or like one of the older engines. One thing to look for as a tip: view bobbing. You, you see how yeah. the way you move, you can immediately tell when you're on like the Doom engine. Just like the way your character just like bobs back and forth as it moves, like it's it that that's that's something I always notice when I play on like the Doom engine ones. Right. Now, ah, but let's go on to the next one. Oh, wait a minute. Give me ten minutes on this one. Ten minutes? Okay. Uh, this is Kingdom of the Dead. I okay. really like the... Just the intro. I didn't... I don't think I recorded the intro, but the intro to this game, like, just launching the game, is really fucking good. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's like an old-school horror oh. movie intro. Yeah. And it gives me this like great House of the Dead what old the school fuck? like old what is that? old school like Resident <laughs> Evil vibes to this yeah. game. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Uh atmospheric immersion great. I was terrified the first time I interacted with the bird where I was just chilling and this bird just came out of the fucking sky and attacked me. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> um and then I realized oh, there was a, a sword. And I, the sword talks to you as well, and it has a what? blinking eye, yes. Okay. Um, I think it's a, basically you are a, a guy who's going around fighting demons, and you're using... And um, this is a demonic sword that you use in order to kill other demons, sort of thing. Right. And then there was... The difficulty thing was you choose it based on how many objectives you want to do to complete the mission, which I thought was kind of interesting. I have seen that difficulty selection done before. Yeah. Um... It's an interesting uh, way of doing it, for sure. The mansion. Like, you're just, you're just chilling, you're just coming on in a horse sort of thing. Don't what, know if... year is it, like, what year is this meant to be? Uh, I don't know. Let's have a look if I can oh, read you got a gun, didn't you? Yes, I have a gun. 
So... I don't know what game... The Longbowman. The thing, I think the thing that makes this really great is the fact that um, the entire game is this black and white hand-drawn visuals to it. Yeah. It is, which, it is which a very, really it's like. very nice visuals. A, a lot of thought been put into it. Like it's like designed like from the ground up. To but if you don't, if you don't like the color palette, there is like customizable color palettes. So you can have like the sepia tones. I think I might show it off here. Like the style you hit. Edit. Yeah, but this looks great though. Yeah, here we go. Here's the styles. So if you're like, oh, it's a bit dark for me, you can like. There is oh, the okay. softer. Um, and then there is the sepia, if you like. Oh, it makes it easier. Color. Oh, okay, they're, they're, actually, they're pretty cool yeah. as well, actually. Okay, yeah. Okay. so it's whatever you prefer. Nice. That's a good idea. Um, so the gunplay is very slow at first on this one. It seems deliberate, like shooting off limbs. Like, you can shoot limbs off your enemies, oh, and they'll run okay. at you with just their their head bopping up and down, which I think well, is I guess very cool. Reminds me of that, like... the sword, right? It, it reminds me of that, like, Those House of the Dead sword style. Um, yeah. Yeah. Where you, you are very confined and zombies will be coming up at you and you have to like do, 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 shoot with them very quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one thing I wanted... To, oh, the demo was unfortunately not super optimized. Bit of an FPS drop on this demo, unfortunately, and I saw other people commenting on FPS drops. Um, the... Uh, and if, another thing was there was no custom key binding options in the oh, demo, okay. which was a small complaint from me, but that was one thing I picked out of the demo. Uh, but tiny it, UI on the right from as well. What, from what I read, I believe it is a one-man development team. Um, okay, right. That's very impressive, so, though. Yeah, from what I figured out. Um, I really fucking love this. I think this is... Possibly, I think this is on my list for my favorite games I've played. Uh, I should say, so from the Boomer Shoot section, I have Fallen Aces and Kingdom of the Dead. So these two okay. games I thought were some of the best games I saw in the Steam Demo Festival. I think they were really good. Uh, it gets a lot more interesting as the game goes on. You sort of get like, there's these enemies that oh, shoot balls hello. at you, They're like cultists. There's a shotgun that you get. There's dynamite you throw, which obviously big. <laughs> there's me killing myself. There's dynamite you throw, obviously very much like um, blood or yeah. um, the new game Cultic. Um, it seems like we're having like maybe a more of a resurgent. Like Boomer Shooters started out, everyone's like, "Oh, Boomer Shooters, Doom clones," and now it's like Boomer Shooters. We can make blood clones, or we can make like horror old school yeah, FPS games, which is what I'm more into. So this is very interesting for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think this game is fantastic. And there's, like, multiple boss fights in the game as well. Like, the Steam store page says it has, like, eight weapons, 22 enemies, and old-school boss fights. The boss fights were, like... Okay, it seemed to be sort of the same thing where you would always fight this worm. Okay. And you... Basically, the mechanic was you just sort of... Um... You throw dynamite into his mouth and that deals massive damage. That was like the big mechanic sort of thing for defeating the boss. Right. Uh, but still really fucking fun and yeah. Saving by taking these quills, like physical save points in the game. Oh no, Resident Evil 4 style. Yeah. Great section towards the end where you get like this hunting rifle and you're fighting people in this um, you know, like auditorium. The final boss fight with the worm. So, so, yes, the, so all the bosses are worms. Yes, in this demo, all that's the bosses weird. are worms. Interesting. Like, yeah, that's just a demo thing. I don't know if that's placeholder or if it's just for the first level. They're all like worm sort of things. I was right. really enjoying this, and then the game ended, and I was sad because I had to. So that was just the mansion level. So I guess it was just worms for the mansion level. I, got I need to stop talking about this because I've run out of time. But I, <laughs> I, it looks great I though. Really, really like that. That's really fun, cool game. Next up, yeah. Have... Okay, here we go. Postal brain damaged. Okay, so I've never played a postal game. And I've never really got Postal. I don't understand the appeal of Postal. I'm going right. to be honest with you. In Postal, from what I understand, it's like this janky game 
where you get a bunch of guns and you go around murdering civilians in like really weird kooky ways where you like piss on them or you like set them on fire and stuff like that. And then they were like, yeah. let's make Postal into a boomer shooter. Right. They got... <laughs> so again, this is Hyper Strange, the guys who did um, the game I was talking about earlier, which was um, Blood West. Um, okay, so it is a okay. legit, like, sort of boomery shootery uh, people who developed it. Um, oh, what? Sorry, uh, before I go on, uh, what did you think uh, Kingdom of the Dead was running in? Uh, if it's. Oh, no, I don't know. I wouldn't. I Un wouldn't even guess. Like, I. Uh, Unity. I wouldn't be. Unity. Okay. And my guess, uh, my guess was Unity. While I was playing, I was like, "This feels like Unity." <laughs> okay. Okay. But yeah. Uh, so I just find it hard to see that when they have like that, like that sort of um, that aesthetic. Like it's kind of difficult for me to see. But yeah, I guess in terms of, like placements of things, like very Unity. Yeah. But they they have the original voice actor from the Postal series who does like the one lines. He he talks constantly in this, which yeah. I think people liked. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which I think is fine. Like, Are you trying to get out of the house? Yes. I For some <laughs> reason, so it's sort of... The saying is sort of like, the whole idea of Postal was it was sort of, you're in a small town just killing people. And this one, it's more of a... Something strange is going on where... It's called Postal Brain Damage. It seems like you're in suburbia, but it's like a dream suburbia. Right, that's, that's why I got the, uh, the very colourful like, graphics, I guess. Hmm. Um. Like one, th like it, it's a postal's a boomer shooter now. Apparently, like this, this game is postal. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Like postal humor, you piss on things to blow them up. Like sometimes, yeah. like just just being in like a shooter and piss. It just reminds me of playing Duke Nukem Forever. It just gives me bad vibes. <laughs> right. Okay. You can piss on the got, enemies for some reason. So what the fuck is going on with those massive? Like he's saying, he's one, he's one, he's one eye is like dark. I keep seeing mutilated corpses everywhere. So it's an interesting um game series, That's isn't it? it? Postal. I still yeah, the postal in general. I still don't know why postal has this weird like cult following. Like I... no, I I can I can kind of see understand. Well, I don't I can I can't into words, but I can kind of I can kind of look and go. Oh, okay, I could see this being. I think that people like, but, uh, it is but very yeah, weird. it's a boomer shooter now. They straight up rip off the uh, meat hook from Doom Eternal. Like they literally oh, have right. the meat hook from Doom Eternal. Like, um, it's pretty fun. This postal brain damage is pretty fun. It's a good boomer shooter. Like what they've put right. together here. Like I don't have. I would say I have very little interest in playing the original Postal games, but I would be interested to play more Postal Brain Damage. I think from what they put together here, it is actually genuinely really fun. I think it looks better than I thought. I it think would be. I think the setting of the suburban dream and like what the hell's going on is actually, to my taste, I like that sort of like weird stuff. Yeah. Um. I've you know I've um. It, yeah. I'm more interested in this. Than I was of uh, the other postal games, I would say. So yeah, this is one fair. I'm going to keep an eye on. There's quite a few. Oh, is that like four postal games or something? Uh, I think there was a post. I think maybe it's Postal Three where people go. It doesn't exist. It's not real. I think to yeah. a point where if you go to like the Postal Four page, it's like there is only two postal games. For I think Postal Three was made by a different developer or something. Oh, okay. And it was really bad, and then people just pretend it doesn't exist. I think it's three, but I might be wrong. I like if you need life in this, you can just kill civilians to get your life back. Yeah, I mean, they'll that's, run from they're you. just... They're, you're just a mass murderer, it's fine. Civilians are just there for your enjoyment in postal games, it seems like. Yeah. Anyway, I think I'm running out of time to talk about them. Postal Brain Damage was legit pretty fun. Uh, not my favourite game from the demo festival, but definitely it a was, solid it's, boomer shooter. It's way better than I thought it would be. From like, I, I, yeah. I know I've seen a lot of Postal content. The, ge so. the, the gameplay is really fun from what I played. Yeah. So, and I also like the fact that it was like, you need the blue key to progress, but there would be these uh, big billboards that just said, 
It'd be like an advertising billboard with blue key this way. Like, I thought that was really smart how they did that sort of thing. Like, by like integrating it, integrate it into the universe. Yeah. Next yeah. up, we have. Uh, oh, what engine did you think that was? By the way, Postal Brain. <laughs> I, I would assume Unity. Unity, but... yeah, it's Unity. I know that one, I think. Uh, next, yeah. so... Uh, Fallen Aces 2, I would say... Uh, so, not Fallen Aces, uh, Project Warlock 2. Um, really fun. I own Project Warlock 1, and I really wanted to... I've wanted to play it for a while, and I haven't got around to it yet, but I thought I'd try the demo for 2 since it was out on the demo festival, and I was already playing a bunch of boomer shooters. Uh, so my first time ever playing a Project Warlock game... This game is really fucking good. Um, it looks good already. Shooting, great. Um, yeah, the shooting is amazing. You don't reload your gun. You sh they just automatically reload after like a set amount of time. You have that old school mechanic. Um, and the thing I love about this, Tony, the shooting's great. The style's the old school. The, so the shooting yep. in the style is old school. But there's not confusing wall-humping button switching. That you have to do in order to. It progress. looks like there should be, but, so there, but there isn't, right? Okay, no. Interesting. There's a map, and then the map has these. You can yeah, see in the top useful. right corner, it has these exclamation marks to show you areas you haven't been to. It will show you that's where the beautiful. red doors are, where the blue doors are oh, that you need for God. the blue keycard. Like, it legitimately has good quality of life features in it, which I'm sure you can turn off if you want to. But for me, I don't have to. There was even, like, the game doesn't baby you, like. There's tutorials everywhere. You see, like, those green consoles? Those have information yeah. on how to play the game. I just walk oh, okay, past right. them because I don't need them because I've played a movie show before. I know what I'm doing. I'm just looking for keys, and I'm just shooting people. Like, I, yeah, I didn't need yeah. them. But if I did, they were there, and I could go back, and I could look at them. Um, That's the stress level thing. Stress level? What What stress level? You're looking at enemy like you can like, see the health right. There's like a stress level underneath. Oh, it. I don't know what that is. I gotta be like, honest. Some, with you. One enemy had like a like a relatively like a three a third bar of stress. I don't know what that means. Yeah. So one thing from reading the tutorials, I have no fucking clue what a stress level is, but I just didn't right. care. I was just running around shooting things. <laughs> I don't know. What that yeah. Means. If there's no, no interaction, then I guess this doesn't doesn't matter. Secret. Make sense. So you got your old school secrets where you can um, do stuff. But yeah, uh, this is really fun. I don't know how much more I have to say about Project Warlock. I think it sort of speaks for itself. It um, looks fun. Like the actual look of it looks fantastic. Like the uh, mm. the art style. Again, you collect blood vials to get life. I always like that. I don't know why. There's even a sewer level, as there always oh, must beautiful. be. Oh, Yes. Yeah, I think yeah. The old time. sewer level. Almost, so let's go on to... Oh, what engine is Project Warlock 2? Oh... Is it... It's, it's going to be one of those ones that's like, it's pretending to be like an old... I want to say, but I don't actually know. If you have to I'm guess. Just gonna, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to guess Unity and just accept that I'm going to be wrong. No, it's Unity. If in doubt, okay, just guess Unity. Just no, guess I had a funny thing, it's pretending to be an old, old game engine. Right. Next up, we have uh, ST Hell. I don't know what game engine this one is before you. Uh, I couldn't figure it out. Uh, but this it's one a... is really cool, but it's not my type of game. So, ST Hell is basically like this really cool aesthetic, atmospheric arena wave shooter. Okay. With no story or progression. I like these little uh, but the like, actual like, like robots? yeah, but the actual like movement and gunplay is really good in this. So it's okay. sort of like on those lines of a game like Devil Daggers, I guess, where you're literally just in a small arena and you're just waiting for enemies to come at you wave by wave, and you're unlocking like uh, new guns. Those oh, spinning wheel things reminded me of the spinning wheel things in Boomerang X. I guess I yeah, really I cool. do like Boomerang X, but Boomerang X has progression and, and like yeah a story. Imagine this, but imagine this, but Boomerang X sort of game design. Mm -hmm. Like level or do design. like the cool. uh, new Doom games are essentially just story mm -hmm. moving you from arena to arena of fighting, basically. Like that has That's been true. like an established way to play. I would say yeah, this would be better if it was levels of arenas. So, SD Hell will take you to a forgotten swamp that was once a test site of Kiraton Industries. Take on hundreds of machines left to rust for years. It's a battle for you 
Probably won't win, but make your stand and your resilience will be etched in the memory chips forever. Um, I like games with endings, so... Yeah, I don't progression... Like I like progression, but this was really fun from what I played of it, so... Sort of an honourable mention from me if, if this is your yeah, sort looks, of game. It looks um, cool. But yeah, really fun game. If you're just looking to play something for a little bit, or if you're someone who really likes these sort of games and just want to see how far they can progress, then yeah, check out ST Hell. Cool game. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I don't know what the engine is, so let's move on to the final one. This is uh, Supplies. Minecraft 2. Minecraft 2, what do you mean? Uh, it's very blocky. Okay. There's this sort of made in Minecraft. So there's like so, a little trench in the, in the dirt. Supplies is a stylish throwback shooter inspired by the FPS glory days. Uh, not Minecraft. It's not Minecraft, no. Right. Uh, for, so, from what I played with this, combat, really good. Walking around okay. button hunting, really boring. Um, so, <laughs> okay. It was the like. Levels don't look like right at the moment. It was like. Better? Yeah, so uh, the thing I found was there was five minutes of combat, and then it was like, oh, this is really cool, five minutes of combat. And then every five minutes of combat. There was 15 minutes of walking around trying to figure oh, out what no. I'm supposed to be doing. Um, like, I found myself stuck multiple times in the two levels that I played. And I l spent a lot of time just walking around trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go, what places I've overlooked and haven't properly found the hidden switches for. Um, and I don't, know, I don't know if, like, every time I pushed a button, I was never sure... If if that was the right button to press, like if that what that had done and what I was supposed to do next. Yeah. It was not clear which part of the map had changed, where I was supposed to be going, what I was supposed to be doing. A um, secret is revealed. Where? What? Somewhere. Somewhere there's been a secret. <laughs> what? And there was a map. I did use the map, and despite the map, I still got incredibly lost and was not sure what to be doing. I don't think um, if you find a switch, can can it not add onto the map what you've done? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I spent I spent a while on this. I played like a long time. I think I did. I stop recording after a while. I played it for a good long time and was just like, ah, fuck's sake! Like, I just don't know where I'm supposed to be going anymore. I'm just running around these sameish corridors, trying to figure out where I'm supposed to be. Like. Well, it's a um, brilliant, it's kind of cool though. It is cool when you're fighting in it for five minutes and then running around it for <laughs> 20 minutes trying to figure out where you're supposed to be going. Yeah. Uh, if you click on something you're not supposed to click on, it just goes, ah ah, ah ah, ah ah. Right. What this engine do you think annoying. this is? This is our final game, Tony. Which engine do you think this is? Uh. Let's go with Doom engine. Yeah, this is GZ Doom. One thing I said okay. earlier. If you see head bobbing, it's probably a Doom engine. Well, there's also the angles that like give it away for me. Yeah. Like, there's certain angles that, that that you do in the in these games. So, oh, one thing, <laughs> um, the view bobbing was making me feel a bit dizzy as well. I wish it's a bit you could extreme. Turn it down, or like turn it off potentially. Right. I know some people like that stuff, but I just found it distracting and didn't find it to be like. That, I uh, like a little bit of you bobbing, but not mm. this much. But yeah, that oh, supplies. And that's the final this. game of the uh, Boomer Shooter section of the Steam Demo Festival. And of course, my uh, favourites from that were Fallen Aces and Kingdom of the Dead. So uh, check those out if you are interested. And uh, we'll see you for the next one. Goodbye. Bye.